Hey YouTubers, good morning, it's Rob Lovett. Guys, today we got a treat. I'm going to go over five different cookbooks I have on the Vitamix. As you guys know, if you watch my channel for a while, you know I've got a, a, a Vitamix 3600. It's about <laughs> 40 years old, I think. It's from 1970-something, uh, early 70s. And the design's earlier than that. Uh, it's still in use. It's probably going to outlast me. And I plan on living to 104. <laughs> so uh, we're in a race. Uh, let's go over quickly these different cookbooks for the Vitamix. This is one you probably wouldn't use a lot. It's, I really, I got it for nostalgic reasons. It's, I think, one of the very earliest cookbooks Vitamix ever put out. It was back in 1951. And it's such a wonderful book because it's a window into how people were cooking and preparing their food back then with the Vitamix. If you look at this cookbook, it's 500 recipes. They fudge a little bit because, like, what they'll say, uh, to make recipes numbers 432 to 437 inclusive, use the same ingredients as were used in recipe numbers 426 to 431, except an equal amount of milk is substitute for the water. <laughs> So, you you do have 500 recipes, but they are actually um, a lot of substitutions. <laughs> like, in these seven recipes, you put in prune juice instead of milk. But it's a wonderful book because it has actually some very cool recipes. But they do things like they'll add but slices of bread as a thickener instead of cornstarch or something, which is extremely practical, which is one reason I love this dopey little cookbook. I shouldn't say dopey, but it's like, who would add bread as a thicker? Well, back then you would. And nowadays, if nobody's looking, I will too. <laughs> but you know, heck, nowadays you can't eat bread. It's got gluten. But back then, shoot, you want to thicken something up, throw some bread in there. You know, I, lo I love the practicality of this book. And it's got some recipes you won't find in other books. Um, and I, I just, like I said, it's a window into what people were doing with their cooking back then. Uh, here's the food group, seven basic food group back then. Uh, children, three to four cups of milk, cheese, or ice cream a day. Adults add two more cups. <laughs> That's my type of food group. But like I said, it, it's, it's, you wouldn't use this really for your Vitamix because there's better books now. But back then, um, they did a pretty good job. And it's interesting to see how the recipes developed over time because these are such simple recipes with so few common ingredients. And people were happy as clams uh, with these recipes. And they're, they're all delicious, but they're not as sophisticated as we have now. Um, the next book is not made by the Vitamix company. Um, it's odd. I haven't used this book very much at all. It's the Delicious Blends book. It's uh, uh, allegedly put out by uh, people who claim that these are the recipes the professional demonstrators use quite a lot. Um, I haven't really used any of these recipes, and I haven't used this book very much, but there are quite a few uh, interesting recipes in this book. It's a lot of recipes you would find the, the uh, professional uh, salespeople doing at the stores and so on. Let me stop for a minute. I hear an odd noise. Okay, the second book, it's got a lot of smoothies and uh, drinks and soups, but I don't see uh, a lot of the things that I would normally be making, but there are some excellent recipes in here. And it's certainly more sophisticated than some of the recipes you'll find in the 500 recipe book. But I, I, I haven't used it really at all. Um, so I can't comment too much on it. But it's not, you won't find it too often either as a used book. It's not that common. But I, I think it's worth a worthy addition of your collection. The next one is put out by the Vitamix cookbook. This is a library book. If you don't have this in your county library system, you can actually get them to uh, order it for you from another county system, probably in your state. And you won't have to pay a penny for this book. But it's a library book. This is more for foodies 
and for people who are vegans and vegetarians, it's very uh, up to date, uh, modern book. It's got, it's a world apart. <laughs> it's a world apart from the 500 recipe book from 1951. This has a lot of wonderful uh, recipes, a lot of nice photographs. It's an excellent cookbook. It it doesn't go into a lot of detail though, as how to use your older vintage uh, Vitamix, but it's an a wonderful cookbook, but it leans heavily toward vegetarian and vegan. But a lot of these recipes you can substitute out different ingredients, but it's a little bit more sophisticated fancy pants than stuff that I would be cooking. But it's, it's quite a, an excellent book. And I love the part in the beginning where the author talks about the early stages of the Vitamix company, which is a U.S. company. Sorry, way back, I think in the 30s. And it's a wonderful story. Um, and I think this is an excellent cookbook. It's just, I wouldn't spend 25 bucks on it. You could get it at your library, where the other books are no longer in print, and you'd have to get them on, uh, on Amazon or, or eBay. This is the Vitamix 3600 or 4000 cookbook that would have come with your Vitamix. And they're not that easy to find online. But you don't want to uh, spend a lot of money on them because they did make an awful lot of these. You just have to wait for them to pop up on eBay. But the thing I like about this manual is because it goes over in detail about how to use your Vitamix. It's not just the recipes. If you've never used a Vitamix before, it gives you a lot of good information. But this is the book that I've used the longest and I've had the longest and I've used more recipes than any. And I, I also like the, the focus on the bread and how easy it is to make. Um, once you put your raw wheat berries in your Vitamix and grind them into flour and then make the actual dough in the, the Vitamix and let it rise and then put it out to bake. It's so simple and quick and fresh. You can't get any fresher than grinding your own grain into flour and using it for bread and have it done in, <laughs> in an hour or so. You know, that's pretty fresh. Um, it's, it's a very good book. And it should be because it's what they sold when it came to you with uh, your Vitamix. But it focuses a little bit on everything. It's got desserts, it's got bread, soups, uh, smoothies, and usually in the back it'll have some uh, um, different sauces and spreads and things and dips and baby foods. Now, this is another book that came, or not came with, but was sold by the Vitamix company. And this is probably my favorite out of all. If you have an older vintage, uh, 36 or 4,000 model like I do, because it also goes into detail about how to use the Vitamix. It has color photographs where the other one doesn't. And it has the uh, spiral bound, so you can use it in your kitchen and fold down flat. And it has a very good variety of in, uh, recipes that have ingredients that I would use or have around the house or I would uh, would probably go ahead and make. Where some of the other recipes in, in the, uh, the, the this Vitamix cookbook, they're a little bit more uh, sophisticated. I wouldn't have as many ingredients uh, with these recipes as I would this one. And I would just feel maybe more comfortable making these foods. This is also an unusual book in that it, there's a couple recipes where they tried to be funny and they succeeded. I was having one of those days and I was reading through it and they talked about uh, elephant soup and they were <laughs> they were using a real elephant. And uh, it just made me laugh. Um, it was They were trying to be humorous and I've never read a cookbook, almost never, that uses humor in the recipes and I thought it was very unique and, and uh, endearing that, that made me like the book even more and the people who were attempting to to uh, produce something that other people would read and enjoy and I, I thought oftentimes when you use humor 
you you offend as many people as you make happy. <laughs> and it's a big risk you're taking. And I, I appreciated the risk they took. I enjoyed it. But it's got quite a lot of recipes. And they're often things that I would use. Although now that my diet has changed, I don't use much sugar and as many baked things and so on. But, but still, um, just like the other day, I've never done this before. The foamy whipped gelatin, I went ahead and made it, and it was interesting. It makes a very nice texture, and it's something you can do very simple with the, uh, the Vitamix. You make a different type of dessert. It's very foamy. It's like a Dream Whip or something. I'm thinking about instead of using water, just using some, uh, well, water to, to dissolve the gelatin, but then I'm going to add, instead of ice cubes, some, some uh, iced uh, milk. And uh, maybe you add some fruit and mix it up and, and change the recipe a bit. But it's a very good uh, cookbook. Uh, let me give you... But, uh, so, so I, can't, I can't, can't go into detail into each cookbook. But let me just look. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go into one area in each book and show you. Right, okay, this book, soups. You've got instant cheese, corn chowder, creamy asparagus soup, broccoli cauliflower, creamy mushroom, creamy potato, creamy tomato, elephant stew, <laughs> French onion soup, fruit soups, instant soups, Manhattan chowder, New England chowder, split pea, tomato, and so on. So that's soups for this book. For this book, <laughs> for soups, you'll see what the differences are. You've got a ton of them. But look at the different titles. Autumn flavor bisque, avocado soup with chipotle yogurt, barley and vegetable soup with chicken and pesto, bean and squash, beet soup with goat cheese and almonds, black bean tortilla, broccoli cheese, carrot ginger, carrot with fennel, chicken potato, chilled cucumber, coconut green curry soup, corn pepper and tomato soup, creamy celery root soup, curried corn and coconut soup, earthy smoky grilled asparagus soup, easy cheesy vegan broccoli soup, Fennel spinach soup, garden fresh minestrone, garden fresh tomato soup, garlicky leek and artichoke, lemon soup with rice. I want to try that one. Maple sweet potato soup, mushroom leek soup, mushroom lover soup, one potato, two potato soup, piquant peanut soup, potato and cauliflower bisque, red pepper soup, roasted broccoli, garlic, and, hum and lemon soup, roasted eggplant and tomato soup, roasted vegetable soup for a crowd. Sassy sweet potato soup, which is interesting. Spiced butternut squash. Oh, that's where we end. So that shows you all the soups. I wonder what they have for soups. <laughs> they don't have an index. Uh, but you kind of get the idea how things have evolved over time. Well, yes, we do. We've got corn soup, carrot soup, cucumber soup, red beet soup, raw potato soup, onion soup, split pea soup, bean soup, lentil soup, cauliflower soup, soya soup, chicken gumbo. Hash soup, salmon soup, shrimp soup, oyster soup. Shrimp soup, one pint of milk, one slice of wheat bread, two tablespoons of oleo. Oh my goodness. We grew up as a kid with oleo because it was supposed to be healthier than butter. And that's what we, as to this day, I still, I don't eat it anymore, but I still dream about a biscuit <laughs> with some hot biscuit with some oleo and some, some jam or jelly mm, for breakfast. <laughs> Teaspoon of salt. And one cup of canned shrimp and a sliced onion. Add liquids and then put the machine running. Mix 15 seconds, taste test, and then heat to desired temperature. So that's how quickly you can make your shrimp soup back in 1951. <laughs> so I kind of hope this gives you an idea of the different books and the different uh, ingredients and, and focus they have and which ones that might be applicable to you. If you're a foodie or a vegan, I would recommend you getting this book out of your library. Or if you got the extra money, just go ahead and buy it on. I'll leave a link in Amazon. <laughs> but if you don't have a need for as fancy book or recipes, if you have an older vintage model, look into these two books, specifically this one. I got this one for five bucks on eBay. I did a research. Uh, and saw how much they were selling for over 30 days and there were a lot of them that went for five bucks 
they were asking 15 20 bucks so I just did a search a safe search and when one was up for sale it notified me and it was five dollars free shipping it was a bargain this is absolute bargain for five bucks you won't be able to get one like right away but if you wait long enough it should and if you don't want to wait spend 10 bucks you could probably get one even quicker and it's an excellent book uh, if you don't have any information about how to use your Vitamix and like I said, you shouldn't have to pay for a lot of these books you can get them in your library and ask them to do a search but some of these won't be available because like this one it's a it's an antique 1951 <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go get me some oleo and make me <laughs> some soup <laughs> hope you guys like this little uh, cookbook review and I may be doing some more Vitamix uh, recipes and I'm actually thinking about making my own cookbook for the vintage Vitamix if I do I'll leave it in a, a description box so you can find out more information about it take care guys see you out there